shirt. That's what I was saying as you stood up the last time and told me to hang on. I was like, ooh, that's a sweet shirt. Yeah. So this is from uh, one of the, the famous breweries in Fargo called Drecker. And uh, they all recommended that we go out there. So we had dinner the second night. Um, and then everybody was, was kind of doing an early night. So they recommended if you guys still want to go get a couple drinks, check out this place, Drecker. And uh, Jake and Britton and I went there. And I was immediately blown away because they have such cool artwork for all of their beers. Like, they just, it's all like my kind of stuff, like bloody, gory, weird, horror, zombies, aliens, just yeah. everything. And, the, and like every beer had like kind of a poster that kind of went with it. And the name was with the, went along with the artwork. Um, and then they had all these, all this merch there, like these super cool shirts. So I picked up a couple and then I was asking one of the gals behind the bar and she said, yeah, like one of the guys that works in the brewery, loves doing art and he does all the artwork for all of the beers and uh just made it so much cooler that it's like oh it's not outsourced like this is their brewery this is their artwork and it's totally unique to them super cool that is cool that that i don't know maybe i guess provides an opportunity for me to say uh that i've kind of I don't know if I've like alienated myself. I, I don't like skulls and like oh. that kind of stuff. Like everything yeah. that you just said that you love, like the, <laughs> the art style, yeah. which I'm not like, you know, um, advocating for my, my, my taste. It's just, I don't like it, but it, I, yeah. it bums me out because there's certain things or manufacturers like bear seal equipment is one of them yeah. where like he puts a skull on everything. And I'm like, I, I don't do the skulls thing. It's just not yeah. my jam, you know, yeah. or like even Darko like has like the bunny kind of in the, the, the Darko movie. What is it? What's that yeah. movie? Donnie, Donnie Darko. Darko. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm just like, I can't get on board with this weird art style, stuff, you know, like <laughs> gory, uh, evil stuff, like demons and all that kind of stuff. I, it's just not my style, but question cool, for you, you talk about, you guys went out, yeah um to this was it a technically a brewery it sounds like yeah yeah okay. it, was, it was it was big it was like this old warehouse that they turned into half of it, it was like a brewery and a food hall yeah. where you can get food but it's like a bunch of different you know smaller kitchens in there and then a yeah. hotel was attached to it so it's just like this huge building with everything all inclusive but we was just hung out in the brewery was Fargo cool? Like, do you would you recommend it as a place to go? Would you go back to Fargo if you weren't being all expenses paid by Mr. PRX? Um, so my our experience, we were only there in the summertime, and right. Fargo is like ninety percent winter. Yeah, <laughs> like year round. They said they only get three months of basically like summer weather. Yeah. Um. So. My experience of the summer was like, yeah, it was cool. It just it's a lot like Indiana. Like if you close your eyes, if if I dropped you in the middle of the Midwest and you closed your eyes and I didn't tell you where you were, you couldn't tell the difference between Fargo, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Louisville. It all just looks the same. It's all similar style houses, lots of green, lush green because it, we get a lot of rain and moisture. It all kind of looks the same. Houses look the same. Buildings look the same. Um, huh. So it wasn't like crazy or special. Um, I thought it was really cool uh, that where Fargo is located, and I didn't know this, but it's right on the border of Minnesota. And so uh, we flew into the Fargo airport with nothing on the agenda. And um, a couple of the guys have lake houses. And so they said, you know, drive out. Uh, where was it? Michigan Lakes is what they call it. Drive out to Michigan Lakes, come come uh, visit the lake house, and it was only an hour away. And it's a part of Minnesota where there are just lakes everywhere. Oh, so it was technically Minnesota that That's you were the, in. That's where the lakes for... were. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. Lakes everywhere, big lakes, small lakes, ton of lakefront property everywhere, and uh, that was super cool, man. Nice. I've been to Minnesota briefly uh, for business, so. Is that when you went out on the boat and um, attempted wake surfing for your first time? Yeah, man. So, like, it was it was funny because I had never wake surfed before uh -huh. in my life. 
Um, Jake had never wake surfed and Britain had experience. And then of course, like these guys live on the boats, like, um, Hopper, Eric Hopper, the, the co-founder, co-owner, he has a lake house at Mead Lake or Mod Lake, something like that. He has a lake house. And then in Fargo, he just has like a small condo and Obviously, if you look at the two, he's spending more time at his lake house. Like he sure. w works remotely from the lake house as much as he can um, because they just love being on the water. Austin was uh, one of the, the head engineers. He was on the boat with us and he just said, you know, my family had a had a house on the lake. And so he spent summers just on the water every single day. And it was really obvious that all of the guy, all of these guys were really comfortable on on these wake surfboards, which I was, I was not familiar with. Yeah. Um, were they doing like spins and like riding on their butt and stuff like that? And not, yeah. not riding on their butt, but I will say, <laughs> I think I've said this multiple times already. I'll probably say it a hundred times after this, okay. but one of the most impressive things was Brian, the, you know, the, the other co-founder, like everybody took their turns. I think he was last out of all of us to go. Um, and he got out there and I was like, damn, dude, like this guy's pretty good. And then he was hanging onto the rope and then he said something to Austin. I couldn't really tell. And then Austin like grabbed a beer and threw it at him and he just boom, <laughs> caught it with one hand. Yes. I was like, damn, dude, like that's impressive. And then yeah. I, you know, texted you and you were like, you know, that's that's what you guys would do. Like yeah. that that was the thing. I didn't I didn't realize it's not not part of my culture, but I want it to be because that that shit was fun, man. Yeah, it sounds I mean, so what you're describing in terms of Fargo and, you know, the three months of summer snow the rest of the year uh, sounds a lot like Pacific Northwest or Seattle, where I spent pretty much the last 10 years where they don't get snow, but it's rain and, you know, gloomy nine months out of the year, but then the three months of summer are amazing. And we've got tons of lakes and the Puget sound and everything up there. And that's where I got introduced oh, nice. to wake surfing on Lake Washington. Um, a buddy of mine had a boat, but it wasn't, it wasn't a wake surf boat. So did for context, were you guys on like a, what is known as like a, a, a designed as a wake surf boat? So he was like adjusting the wake and yeah, like, cause yeah. switch, which side of the boat, the wake was being yep, created on. Yep. Okay. I've been on those types of boats and the wave or the wake that they create is way better. But what the, where I learned how to wake surf was on just a traditional, like, I don't know, like speed boat. And yeah. the, 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 the buddy of mine had to buy these huge, um, bladders, like water bladders, and he would fill them up with water and we'd run them through the middle of the boat and tuck them in all the cubbies, basically just to like weigh down the boat to create a better wake, which gotcha. still isn't nearly on par with like what you experienced for your first time. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, one of the things that we would do is see like what kind of various things you could toss out to the wake surfer, like usually a beer or a soda, have them open it while they're riding a board or yeah. we'd throw Frisbees back and forth sometimes. That's uh, cool, man. Yeah. Always at the risk of, uh, losing a Frisbee. Fun fact, actually, my original wedding band sits at the bottom of Lake Washington oh, oh, no. because it slipped off while I was wake surfing oh, one man. of those Seattle summers. Yeah. That's funny, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they, you know, first few guys like uh, Justin went, Austin went. I think it was just those two. And then they were like, you know, go ahead, Kyle. And uh, they had been, you know, I was watching carefully and I had told them, like, you know, I've I've water skied, I've snow skied, I've snowboarded, I've skateboarded um, like I think I can I can probably pick this up pretty quick. And I think they were trying to like not not let me get my expectations too high and you know like it's all right most people fall like the first handful yeah. of times and you know like whatever you do it'll be awesome and and uh but like i was really really careful to watch them when before it was my turn i'm like careful observer how are they doing this digging the heels in and uh but i mean I popped up first time. Everybody was like, whoa, no way. Uh, yes. I mean, were they even coaching you? Did you have like a coach telling you like, hey, toes over the tip of the board, forget it, like anything? Everybody was like yelling okay. like the whole okay. time. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then when I actually like got up, Austin was on the back of the boat and just like telling me like, you know, 
put more pressure on the front or more pressure yeah. on the back or like try to get into this sweet spot. Um, but the, the second, so I went for a while on my first run until I lost it and I fell. And then my second run is when I threw the rope and actually like did it on my own for a bit, which was again for them, like Austin said, it took him three months to be able to like go without a rope. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was like feeling pretty, pretty badass after that. You everybody, should, yeah. everybody was pretty impressed. So a good first impression. Um, and then poor Jake went after me and he has had no boarding experience of okay. anything. And yes. So, let's talk about this. What happened with Jake? Uh, Jake ate a bunch of water multiple <laughs> times, man. Like, yes. uh, so like not his fault. I probably made it look easy because I was like, I've never done this before. And boom, here I go. My first try. And so, um, I might, it made a, it may have looked easier, sure. uh, to him, but like, I forgot how hard it is. Like I, I did that when I water skied, you know, ate water a bunch of times. Like I went through the process of learning how to, to fight the friction of the water and hold yourself up and pick yourself up. Like that's not an easy thing to just get straight off the bat. So like, yeah, yeah he struggled with that multiple times and he was starting to get there but it's also taxing, dude. Like yes. it's exhausting yes. getting up and falling down and getting back up and falling down. And so he tried, he gave it like a really good try and he got up on his feet a couple times, but like never quite got there. Um, but he was like being pulled by the boat versus like actually catching the wave kind of thing. He wasn't even, I don't <laughs> know. Jake, forgive me. <laughs> I'm not talking <laughs> shit, but just trying to paint a, an accurate picture. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he was on his feet more than like a couple of seconds each okay. time. Like okay. the last few times, like he got up and everybody was like, yeah, like he got it. And then just as quickly, <laughs> like that, the <laughs> nose would sink in or something. Yeah. Like, or lose the balance. He had a hard time. Like, you know, you start with the board sideways and then yeah. once you get up, you pivot forward yeah. and yeah. he was having a hard time with that. I mean, it's just, it's a lot to, to try to pick up and you got to do it quickly. And then, you know, after him, like somebody else would go and just get up in like two seconds. Yeah. So, um, I mean, he gave it a good shot. And I think like next time we get out there on a boat, Jake will definitely be riding all over the place, but it was a blast either way. Like we were all having such a good time. That's awesome. Wake surfing is a great time. Um, in my experience, much easier, in general, but also on your body than wakeboarding. Wakeboarding, you can get, I personally, you get thrashed. Um, but, uh, okay, cool. So you guys landed in Fargo. You uh, road trip, short road trip over to Minnesota, joined the PRX crew at the lake, go out on the boat, wake surfing. Then oh, what? also... What Britain crushed it. Britain oh, has been wake surfing before. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. he was he was a pro. Like there was he was basically on par with the other guys, like able to keep up. Um I think he was able to consistently go without a rope. Like, yeah. Definitely definitely impressive there. But yeah, after that, um we spent like a good probably four hours on the water or something. And they kept saying this. We didn't know because we didn't have anything to compare it to, but they kept saying like how it was just a perfect day on the water. I think that mm. the temperature outside was 88. It was sunny. The water was 82. It was just gorgeous. And there was no one. It's a like a smaller lake and there was nobody on it. So it was like oh, glass, man. Yeah, it was. There was no wind. It was basically like the perfect conditions to learn how to do this stuff. So we we definitely lucked out. Good times. Yeah. And then Good after that, sure. um, they took us. Uh, there's like a, a nearby pizza place um, called I think it's called Zorba's or something. There were a lot of Z's like they their gimmick was on the menu. Any word that has an S in it, they're going to change it to a Z. Got so it. um I'm having a hard time thinking of uh, a Sprite would be Sprite or getting <laughs> beers instead of beers. I don't know. Yeah, that that was a bad example. But, you know, just think of whatever food stuff. You put a Z instead of an S. But okay. it was good. They, good pizza? Uh, yeah, good pizza. Good pizza, good beer. Um, it was a good way to meet the crew and, like, instead of – getting in there and going into like a business discussion and like mm. hashing our, our shit out, like just 
going and having a good time and like drinking beers and like let our guards down, like just being ourselves in front of each other. I think it was probably the best way to start it because, um, when we did go into the next day and we did get into those discussions, it was like we had already, it was like the best kind of icebreaker. Like we already felt comfortable. We already felt like we could open up and be honest. And it wasn't so like, I don't know, man, like, I don't know. It can be nerve wracking getting into those situations. They buttered you guys up. They, they knew did. what they were doing. Yeah, for they sure. And it worked, up. man. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I will gladly say if anybody ever wants to butter me up, this is the template. Oh, Take me on your boat. <laughs> give me beers. Let me wake surf. It was fun, dude. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I'm, I'm still bummed to have missed it. Uh, yeah. Looks like you guys had a good time. Um, okay, so Britain crushed it. Shout out to Britain, um, experienced wake surfer. Yeah. Um, you guys went and had pizza and beers, and then I'm assuming you probably went back to the Airbnb, and then we're into, what, Tuesday? You guys are going on site at PRX. Yeah. Tell me about it. Like, what was the vibe, you know, like, walking in? Yeah. Uh, so you're obviously already cool with, like, the guys you went wake surfing with, but now you've got a team of, like, 60 people that you're right. meeting. Like, what yeah. happened? So we didn't, I don't know that I met all 60 people. Um, when we, we got there, it was pretty early. I think 8.30 or 9 is when we met up. Um, and Justin had, like, the whole day planned out. Like, he is a planner. He was very organized. So um, we got there, and uh, it's like a, it's a huge building. So you walk in, and um, there's, like, an office space where I could see people. And obviously, like, it wasn't a secret that we were coming to town. So, like, as soon as we walk in, you see people looking in our direction. And um, we didn't, like, go around the office and meet everybody. We pretty much just went went straight to, like, their conference room and, uh, you know, discussed all the things that I'm not at liberty to discuss. But I mean, <laughs> I, could, I could talk about, yeah. Um, but I felt like just walking in, I, I was like... I felt apprehension about it because I made a very uh, polarizing video that potentially all of these people saw five weeks ago or whatever. Like it, it probably ruined some people's weekends. Um, it definitely put PRX into a different mode than what they were in prior to my video coming out so like i was worried that i was walking into a building of of people that hated me and mm. uh i was a little nervous i was a little like what what do i expect uh you know what can i expect um the prx guys listened to our podcast and made reference to a wood chipper a couple times <laughs> in a in a funny way not a threatening way but they were like uh they said that they they tried to see if they could get a hold of a wood chipper to rent and just park out front yeah. so so we could see that when we that walked up great. it was so funny um but uh yeah we just like we started um with like the main uh the main group it was everybody that snowboard uh, that uh wake surfed with us plus uh tk and tk was previously their social media guy he was uh one of the two that was in their response video okay um, now left. he's yeah yeah tk's uh, i believe he's like head of marketing or something he's like an elevated marketing position um super nice guy like everybody that we met that morning that we hadn't met on the boat. Everybody was super friendly, super cordial. Um, I felt like I knew immediately that like TK would be my bro. Um, all right. He through and through, he is a home gym guy, like oh. through and through he's a part of the Let's home gym TK. community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like he knew about companies and influencers big and small like he was bringing up stuff that i thought like oh that's super niche like he's into that like how i i would just assume that these guys were too busy doing their thing that like they wouldn't geek out on these these little things these little creators like we do so yeah um tk especially i was impressed with his knowledge of like the home gym niches can you give me an example 
Oh, man, don't put me on the spot. I mean, Shoot. I'm just trying to give the people what they want, you know, for those of us that weren't there. Um, um, let's come back to that. Okay, uh, fair enough. So <clears throat> you get there. You get ushered into a conference room. You can feel the... Oh, I can't tell you. Oh, let's go. So, uh, man, well, it's not going to be as impressive because he was at home gym con, but, like, Cleva Belt, Mutant Metals... Like all of these, all of these smaller companies, JD Gym Equipped, like all of these smaller companies that like, if you're, if you watch Coop's video, it's like top of the iceberg versus right. the bottom. And, you know, the crazy people are at the bottom. Yeah. Um, like it's stuff that like, you know, top of the iceberg, people don't know. Maybe like a couple levels down, people don't know. Like JD Gym Equipped isn't huge, but yeah. the people that know their stuff love it absolutely love it you will not find like a hater of the quality or the maybe they're like oh it's too expensive or whatever but nobody's like that's junk that's yeah. bs uh, but a lot of people just don't know about it and right. so like hearing them talk about stuff like that and and really geek out on like the the knurling and that the elements that we geek out on it was just surprising to hear that because i didn't get that impression of them from afar no not while i was reading from a macbook right that's, un that's yeah. understandable yeah <clears throat> um so okay so Thanks for the example. Uh, so you walk in, you're ushered into a conference room. You can feel the seething eyes on you from the upper deck office, or at least that's the way you were interpreting that's it. That's how I because... felt. I don't know. <laughs> I, that's like, I, I may have gotten too much into my head over it. Like, I don't think Jake felt that. Felt that. I don't think Britton felt that. Yeah. Um, maybe I didn't either. Maybe I was like, I don't know, reading into it too much, but... Yeah, so we we went into the conference room. Justin basically like gave the presentation on who we are, um, what what's our target demographic, some of the historical stuff. Um, we talked a bit about the Shark Tank thing. We talked about different relationships with uh, different influencers over the years. Um, talked about their their roadmap, sort of stumbles that they've had along the way and where they want to go um i can't i can't get into details about like their roadmap and their you know products that they're wanting to come out with or things that they're prototyping and stuff um but it was all like a lot of the presentation was stuff that if anybody's familiar with prx they know the shark tank story they know the profile racks are their hero product um you may or may not know that they've come out with other products since then. They have like a folding rack line. They have a build limitless line where it's like you buy a squat rack and then you can upgrade it to a six post or whatever over the course of time. Um, but they also shared with us how like sometimes they've they've sort of struggled with trying to get the word out. They've struggled with, you know, marketing, branding, um, and that's where it really started to get interesting because that's where it was like, what do you guys think about this? And, you know, like, is there anything that that sticks out to you? Is there anything that, you know, we could focus on or do better or anything like that? And that's that was like where the collaboration started. And uh, I think that we gave them some pretty valuable input. Great. Could you double click on the target demographic piece like mm -hmm. what what did they express as their target demographic I don't know if i'm allowed to say that oh man so it's interesting to me because i we talked about this and i don't know if it made the podcast that we actually aired or not but i had made a comment at one point that in my opinion like PRX is more for like the casual home gym or, or like mm -hmm. the, the, the entry level home gym person and not quite, you know, doesn't really appeal to the guys who kind of exist in our like walled garden of like, you know, 20 plus thousand plus dollar home gyms and constantly upgrading and swapping things out and stuff. So I was just curious if uh, like what their target is, if they're hitting it. But so. If you don't want to share that's fine <laughs> so um i think that it won't come as a surprise that they're targeting someone who has limited space that probably sure. has a garage gym that probably shares that space with a vehicle 
So it's not something that can be set up all the time. It has to be easily stored away. Like that's been their sort of avatar customer for a long time. And the training that that person does is definitely different than the training that somebody who has a dedicated, who is like to the level where they're like, no cars in my garage. My, my gym is more important than having covered parking for my garage. Like that's a different target demographic. Yeah. So um, I don't think that that would come as any surprise saying that. Um, that's a safe, that's safe. But I, I also don't think that it's a good idea to stop there. Like, I think that they should, what was that? Was that your tummy growling? That was one of the uh, Air Force jets flying <laughs> over. And then I muted okay. so that <laughs> it wouldn't be in the audio. Oh, okay. Go on. Um, yeah, I don't think they should stop there. I think that they should, they should look at where the home gym community is going and look at the whole, the home gym community as a whole and not just say, yeah, we want these ones and we're, we're fine with not targeting anybody else. Just like, look at this, this is a huge customer base and these are people that are hungry for innovation. And if you can get in there and innovate, it doesn't matter if you're the folding rack guys, if you make some awesome equipment, people are going to buy that no matter who it's coming from. I mean, the fact that they're a U.S. manufacturer and the fact that they're they're sourcing their steel in the U.S., the barbells are made in the U.S., their manufacturing is done in-house, like all of that, I think, helps them to gain even more traction with the U.S. home gym market. Did they, so this is just me being curious and a question that I would have asked had I, had I made it. Um, do they have any data on for the peep for the for the cohort of people that have bought a folding rack from prx how many of them actually wind up putting it up against the wall versus just wind up leaving it out all of the time anyway i don't know if they have ah, that data i would, have asked I, would that. I would be interested yeah, yeah. me too yeah. and 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 the the profile racks go up that's not the only kind of folding right. rack they yeah, have I they have they the have ones like that go the swing, in yeah the swing and doors. they they recently did they have like a four post that does that as right. well so yeah. yeah i'd be curious to hear about that too i mean yeah. anecdotally I know my buddy who has a folding rack yeah. never folds never it up. Never puts it away. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's what I hear as well. Like, so for, for the, <clears throat> actually like this was a, a, an L for me as like a, I don't know, home gym, uh, encourager, a home gym evangelist. My brother who lives in Texas, he recently bought a rack and he was hitting me up like, Hey, like I've got like, a, I think he had like a $600 budget and he was like, what rack should I get? And oh no, he had $600 in like Amazon gift cards. So he's like, what <laughs> rack should I buy from Amazon? Oh, no. So I, I was sending him like the, like the Mikolo, Mikolo for like actual three by three, one inch hole. I think it's still like 13 gauge steel, but it's still like a four post rack and it has yeah. one inch hole. So my big thing with him was like, Hey, like if you get this rack, you know, when I get extra stuff or I'm done using certain pieces, like I can just send them to you. You can have them like this definitely go with like four, uh, four posts, three by three, one inch whole rack. He didn't, he wound up going with a folding rack, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I took that as an L like I didn't do a good enough job, uh, selling him on the benefits. And it's like, not only is it a folding rack, but it's like, um, doesn't have four-way holes it's just got those big old holes that are like bigger than one inch well, i don't even know what size those are but you know it gets the job for him that done gets the job done for him he's way more jacked than i am former marine like mm -hmm. yeah my wife often says like how does your brother stay so jacked and he's got like a, a <laughs> fraction of the home gym that you've got like stop stop oh, right there man. Yeah, she's trolling you bro <laughs> she I can, does. is she the one oh. commenting on all my youtube videos probably no Damn. she Man, any time that like I question a purchase she makes, she's like, oh, I talk about that home gym of yours. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> ah, ah, yep, stop, yep, stop. Yep. Enough of that. Um, okay, so you guys have your presentation, you're hanging out. Um, this is, we're still talking about Tuesday here. Yeah, what yeah. What happened next? Yeah. So um, after like, 
after the the company presentation, the story, all this stuff, the roadmap, um, we went out and they have a big area that they call the tank where it showcases all of their products. Oh, sweet. Um, and so we went out there and cruised around and all of their racks are out there, the bars, plates, all their wall storage. Um, and then they also, some people know, some people may not know, but a, a subsidiary of PRX is Grind Fitness. Burner so there account. was... Yeah, there's a grind <laughs> fitness section, and then um, huge area in front is this other subsidiary that they are kind of soft launching right now, or it's been around, but they haven't talked about it. It's called Sensory RX, and right. and that is uh, it's a really cool project, and Brian is very passionate about it. I, I don't think that they've... They've put any effort into marketing it yet because they've wanted to make sure that everything was in place before they say anything publicly and launch it. But it's basically um, geared towards uh, children who are on the spec spectrum that need um, sensory breaks. And so it's it's kind of a, a play set, but it's built of the 3x3 three three posts. So it's really heavy duty, really well made. Um, and you can build it out into different configurations similar to Swing Sesh. Um, the big difference between this and Swing Sesh is that it's not marketed as being able to use it for workouts. Like, it's strictly for children. It's stri strictly like a heavy-duty play set, but it's modular, so you can add to it. The one in the showroom had a zip line, which was really cool, cargo nets, monkey bars, um, all sorts of different, like, sensory swings. Oh, um, sweet. It was really cool, man. Like, I was like, this is cool that they're doing this for children with the needs, but, like, as a grown-ass, immature man, I just want to climb all over this thing. It was learned, fun, dude. I learned that about you at Home Gym Con. Yeah. When you were climbing all over the uh, swing sash rack yep. upstairs. Are they open to the public? Like, do they sell locally? Like, can people order online and pick up at their warehouse and stuff like that? I think so. Local? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fact cool. check me on that if anybody knows. But I think that that showroom is open to the public. And nice. I would assume people can do local pickup. I don't know. I didn't look into it, obviously, because I don't live there. But, um, yeah. So after that area, we went out and uh, Chris, their head of manufacturing, came and gave us a tour of their manufacturing facility and... Man, it is truly impressive. They told us the square footage. I don't remember numbers like that. It was okay. really, really big, just like a, a receiving bay or no, no, shipping area that fit like, I don't know, 12 trucks, like 12 doors potentially to load up, you know, 12 or probably more, a large number of semis simultaneously. Then they just have all of their inventory on shelves, like a, a whole God, it was beautiful. A whole row full of barbells, top to bottom, Ooh. just a crazy amount of barbells. Um, so that was like all their inventory getting ready to be shipped out. And then we walked farther down, and this is where they receive their raw steel. This is where everything comes in. And so we saw three by three posts that were raw, uncut, super long, ready to go. And then all of their, you know, each step of the process is an automated machine well some are automated some aren't but you know cutting the uprights got to see the machine where the upright comes in and then a laser cuts it um got to see the uh they have like this uh automated welding machine so it's like a welding oh. arm so you put all these pieces they into do robotic like a, welds yeah Nice. Put all these pieces into a template, and then you put the template where it needs to go, lock it down, and this robotic arm, super cool. They had a press break where they were, you know, bending stuff manually, like a person manning the press break. Um, they do all the powder coating in-house. And, oh, man, I forgot the coolest part. They let me powder coat some uprights. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like... Oh, I feel bad for whoever's getting those uprights. Nah, man. <laughs> So, um, I I don't remember whose idea it was, but somebody was like, "Yeah, Kyle, get in there and do it." What color and was it? Red. 
Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. Like, I spray paint, and this is, like, way better than a spray paint can. Yeah. Like, it's just this nice uh, industrial sprayer. You just go back and forth to make sure the coverage is is evenly distributed. Yeah. Um, so I did it for a bit for the camera, and then I was like, okay, buddy, you come in here and fix my work, because <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't really want, you know, some half-ass paint job going out there into the world. Somebody's um, going to have some paint runs coming all right. down. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then it, it goes from there into the cooker, and then, you nice. know, cooks on there. I don't know. And the whole process, like, they're explaining to us, the whole thing and uh one of the one of the things that i thought was funny and like would be totally something that i would do is like every table every bench that like workbench work table storage thing it's all made out of scrap uh, and uprights and stuff. Yeah, yeah 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 exactly I'm so jealous. it's like yeah. numbers on everything there was even like a bench that was like a bench pad from one of their benches and then it was like upright feet and stuff because it's like yeah of course you're gonna have some stuff with blemishes and mistakes and like what a waste to throw all that out like american steel's yeah. not cheap so yeah they they reuse it all so it was everywhere um yeah and so along that process you know we were meeting the people at each station we were you know seeing the faces of the people that work for this company the faces uh, the people who have families at home that are supported by this company, like it, it felt much more like, like a community thing that's good for the community, that's good for the families, that's good for Fargo, rather than like my impression of them where, you know, they're this million dollar company, got a deal on Shark Tank and just trying to crush the little guy. Like seeing them, seeing all these people, I didn't get that vibe it felt like like they take care of their people like this is a like a it seems like a pretty chill workplace like there's a basketball hoop um and they, they had a really nice break room and it's like the open office space um their management style seems pretty chill honestly like it seems like a good place for people and not quite the corporate conglomerate like i i had the impression you know what they say about assumptions um <laughs> So you're so skeptical, man. Which is no, good. Which no, is good. that's not me being skeptical. Oh, like, okay, you know what okay. they say about assumptions, right? It makes an ass out of you and me. Like yeah. if you assume, yeah. So like yes. you know, you assume, so it made an ass out of you. I'm not being. Oh, okay. I'm not All being right. negative here. All right. Um, I didn't release a scathing YouTube video that <laughs> threatened the jobs and livelihood of <laughs> 60 people. <laughs> All those people. <laughs> All those people that wanted to <clears throat> throw me into the the I don't the know, wood chipper, the, the welding machine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. That would have been funny. Yeah, Kyle, why don't you come over here and uh try your hand at cutting some <laughs> some three by three steel. Yeah. Take a closer look and lose then a, just push yeah, me lose in. a finger or an arm yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, funny. Um all right, so let's speed this up a little bit for the sake of time because I was trying to go highlight by highlight, but I know yeah. that you're probably gonna release some content about what happened. Um what was like the next relevant thing that happened, you know, post tour of the yeah. m machining factory and everything like that? So like, after what the, came out of this and yeah, after the tour, we went to the prototyping room and they showed us their prototypes. And that's Ooh. where Britain was like, he's he's such an engineer. He's so smart. And he was able to tell them what was wrong with their prototypes and how to fix it like within seconds of seeing each and every one like it was it was really really incredible um to see that in person and like that was my first time meeting britain too so i didn't yeah. really know what to expect like we've we've had a handful of phone calls and stuff but man the guy knows his shit dude like it's really really impressive so we went back to the boardroom or whatever we had lunch had kind of a working lunch and we're just like shooting the shit basically for the rest of the day just like brainstorming ideas like how can how can we work together? You know, what are the, some of the issues that PRX is facing? What are the strengths that we bring, that Britain brings, that I bring, that Jake brings? Because Jake was actually a lot of part of this discussion. Um, Jake's surveys provide valuable insights into like oh, what right. things the home gym community wants, what things they don't want, what do they care about, what do they not care about. Um, one of the one of the fun facts is that. People 
when asked if they care if something's manufactured in the U.S. or manufactured overseas, only 20 percent said that was really important to them. Right. But when you ask the question, is it important for a company to be involved with the community? Like not just collaboration, but going to Home Gym Con, showing the people in the videos, like who is this? Why should I care about you? Like that kind of stuff. 70% of people who responded said, this a company being a part of the community is really important to me. So it's insights like that that um, that Jake brought to the table that sort of informed our entire discussion. Like, what are we talking about? Why is this important? Why are you doing this? Why don't you do this? Like, it was it was really cool, and they were all like, I think we were all equally interested in the conversation and curious and asking follow up questions, and everybody was involved. It was like a really good discussion all around it was really cool and that that lasted like a, a good good chunk of time like I, I definitely think some positive things are going to come from that discussion like collaborations with vendetta and myself and uh jim pin is going to be a part of it as well um so definitely things that are in the works that i can't talk about right now i don't want to jinx it um but then you know, Brian multiple times has expressed that he understands that there are good ideas in the community and he wants to do sort of like a mini Shark Tank thing where once a year um, I find a good idea from the community, like the best idea or the most fitting to PRX. And I bring that to PRX and then he wants to turn that from an idea into a prototype and put the engineering behind it to, to get it manufactured and get the protection in there to get the, the IP protected or, or get some sort of patenting coverage on it and then release it as a PRX product. And that, that I believe could actually happen. Like Brian's really involved with uh, entrepreneurs and lifting up uh, small business owners and small creators. So I think that has some legs to it. And that would benefit not just me, not just Britain, not just Jim Penn, but the community as a whole. I want to kind of summarize um, because from, from like the, I don't know, the tiny echo chamber that I exist in at least, like I think what people are trying to gather from this for for those who are not in the like I don't know the circle of trust, but like for the guys like me or you, like kind of have known about this trip and like what's going on, but like kind of a summary of like, hey, what was the point of this? Like, how did we go from, you know, Kyle releasing that video, the community rallies around you and Vendetta and and Jim Pin, and all of a sudden now you're breaking bread with them in Fargo, like like. I'm just trying to summarize, like, okay, what was accomplished? Like, what was the point of the trip? Um, what is, like, what is the future state of all of this look like? Um, can people put down their pitchforks, et cetera, et cetera? What so, like, the whole point of my video initially was to bring awareness to something that I felt was an injustice. Right. And I did that, and... The the video was viewed much more than I thought it was going to be viewed. And people chimed in from all corners of the Internet, from all corners of the home gym community. And the the overwhelming response was PRX, step up and do the right thing. Like you did the wrong thing. Do the right thing. And PRX is they had a chance to respond they, you know, I've I've since heard about what was going on behind the scenes, so the response makes a little more sense. But nobody's oh. proud of that response. Okay. Nobody's like, yeah, that was excellent. It was just sort of like they were in fight or flight mode. Like they didn't quite know what to do. They thought it was gonna be a good response video, and then as soon as it went out, they were like, man, I should have listened to the, you know, the the thought in the back of my head that this wasn't a good idea. Um, and then once once they got the backlash again, they were like, you know what, man, like, you're right. We did the wrong thing. And what we should have done is gotten in touch. So I know we can't go back and undo that. But what we can do is try to start doing the right thing now. And then they stepped up and they got in touch and they they were pretty vulnerable in a lot of our discussions and they were like you know we thought you were going to tell us to to fuck off man like we 
could feel the anger from you and from the community and rightly so. And like, we didn't know what was going to happen when we reached out. We totally thought that, you know, you could just blow us off. And from my perspective, I'm like, I appreciate the community rallying behind us so much. And like, what would be the point if we did all this and we got it and we made it happen and we got them to reach out and then we're like, no, no, I don't want it. You, you take your apology and you, you walk away, PRX. Like, what the hell is the point of all that? Like, the right. point was to get here, to negotiate, to talk, to form a partnership. And, like, I, I can understand how people would feel skeptical about it because they weren't a part of the last month of, of talks and stuff. But, like, this is what we want. This is what we rallied behind. Right. This is what we want. We want other companies to see this and say... This is the path forward. If we see a creative idea from the community, don't borrow it. Don't take it as your own. You work with that creator and it's a much better outcome for everybody. And it sounds like that's like, so yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously I agree, but um, so yeah, in summary, like PRX made a decision, you called them out, they responded, quickly realized that that response was not well received and they they took a second at bat right or they right. you know like and that second at bat essentially was like asking inviting you jake Britton, to come out to, to fargo to like give you a closer look at like hey like this is this is the heart of who we are like this is what we're trying to do like to kind of break down the barriers of what kind of left you perceiving them as like this big corporate entity, you know, out there just like, you know, gobbling up patents and doing their own thing. But no, like we're, a, we're, a, you know, a, we're a small co a company. I mean, you would call that a small company, right? Like 60 ish employees, mm -hmm. like doing our best, trying to, to kind of like carve out our space in this like home gym equipment manufacturing arena. And now it sounds like they're, going to work with you with Britain on you know some projects and potentially opening up that door even wider to other people who have ideas and realizing like no this is the way like this is the right way to do it like yeah. to partner with people uh to build a bridge versus you know a dam i guess basically um yeah. so that's cool i think an overriding theme that i felt and we discussed we said a different iterations multiple times of the days that I was there was that like, this is not the ideal way to go about forming this, this partnership, this friendship, but like we did what we did to get here and we're grateful to be here. And I don't know that it could have happened any other way because of their history, because of my history. Um, I don't know that there would have been a different path to get here. And sometimes that's just how life works, man. Yeah. Like, like we kind of stumble into things that happen to be sort of monumental changes in our lives. And like um, sometimes you got to fall a couple times before you realize that, ah, damn, I don't know how to finish that analogy. You got to fall before you learn how to walk. I don't know. You yeah. got to mess up a couple times before, before you, you walk. You got to fail you go. forward. All yeah. the plenty of analogies yeah. for that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's that's how I see it. And like I I get their perspective. I get why they responded the way they did. Um, Do you, I don't know. You didn't elaborate on that. Like you didn't talk about like what their thought process was. Not that I'm asking you to like yeah. about, you know, when they put out that, that um, scripted, you know, response video that, you know, was, was a stepping stone to getting to the positive outcome that we have yeah. now. But yeah. So, I mean, part of it is, I think, like when you come to a decision and you have a handful of people, you get kind of hive mindy and everybody's like, yeah, this is a good idea. This is good. Idea. It's a good idea. Right. It's a good idea. Everybody is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And like, you don't reach out to anybody else that's to double check. Idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So like, I think that's kind of part of what happened. I think that they were rushed, right? They, I mean, to you and I, it didn't seem rushed because we're like waiting day after yeah. day after yeah. day. And it's like, I can crank out a video and, and you know, 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah. What's taking this so long? But, um, for them, it was really important that they that they get it right. And I know they did the opposite, but like they were they wanted to be careful about it. They wanted to get it right. They 
they were also kind of in defensive mode because my video felt like an attack on them. It felt mm. like an attack on who they were. Like, put the put the, the actual controversy aside. Like, Jammer Arms aside, they felt like I was saying they were a shady company. And they, they oh. felt like, like, that's not who we are. And then this is how this person who doesn't know us is representing us. And the commenters all believe this person when this person is saying all these bad things about us. And it, like, it made them mad. It pissed them off. When we were at dinner the second night, we had a shot of tequila and a beer, and then the truth just bleh, came out. <laughs> and I was like telling him like you know after i hit publish and that video popped off like i was getting i was scared that you guys were gonna sue me or something and they were like we went into the boardroom and talked about what kind of legal action we would take and i was like were, Fuck, that's like, crazy. Ha, 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 ha. we still might no. <laughs> but like i mean like when you're in that mode when it's like fight or flight yeah. you're considering all possible options so like <laughs> oh, they they were they were pissed man like they their feelings got hurt they were pissed they felt like they were being misrepresented and they wanted to respond and like defend themselves not realizing that that would come off as defensive and right. insincere and like hindsight is 2020 now we all know you know any company that is in this situation in the future is going to know that's not what you do but like yeah. It, this is uncharted territory. They didn't yeah. know. Um, so I don't know. Like, all in all, we just kept saying, like, this is a crazy road to get here, but we're super grateful to be here no matter what. Like, this is this is going to be a really beneficial partnership for them, for us, for the community, and, like, we're going to be in a better place because of it. So, like, if that's what it took to get here, so be it, man. I think that's a perfect ending to that part. I want to call out that you were in Fargo's in North Dakota, South mm -hmm. Dakota, North Dakota. But because yep. you were in, I don't even know how they say this, but Northeast, Southwest Dakota. I don't know how Tommy <laughs> no. and Tanner, like, yeah, I don't know the order North of Northwest, Southeast, Southeast South Dakota. Dakota. Uh, I think I got it like right. That. But you were, you were, in, you were like breathing the same air as our friends, Tommy and Tanner from yep. Massonomics. Uh, I know that when you and I were originally talking about the trip, we were like, oh, we should try to go see Tommy and Tanner with Massonomics. What yeah. I discovered was they were like a good couple hours, maybe even three, three hours away three from hours where away, you guys yeah. were. But I bring that up to give a shout out to Tommy and Tanner because we learned this last week that at least Tanner listens to every episode yeah. of do you even lift bro? I hope the same is, uh, can be said for Tommy, but I just wanted to, you know, like give some appreciation because like in my, in my mind and in my opinion, like they're kind of trailblazers in this yeah. like podcasting space around home gyms and they do it well. And we've obviously borrowed some ideas from them with like the overrated, underrated and stuff, like out of pure respect and admiration for what they're doing. But right. I just wanted to give them, make space to give them a shout out on the Do You Even Lift Bro podcast and say for thank sure. you for, for listening. For sure. Yeah. Unofficial sponsor of this episode because <laughs> they didn't go. ask us and they didn't pay us. <laughs> they did not. It's the Massonomics podcast. <laughs> Tommy and Tanner. I, I am a huge fan of their stuff. Like I, I buy their merch all the time. I love their I shirt know. designs. I hit up Tommy hoping and now put you on the spot bro like i'm hoping tommy can come up with some shirt designs for me because i just i love that that style i love what they do i'd love to love to keep supporting them so yeah yeah for sure thanks for listening dudes yeah you guys are welcome on anytime you want to come on i've been on yours <laughs> could so. you imagine <laughs> yeah the four of us trying to like <laughs> pull together a podcast right that'd yeah. be awesome yeah um uh okay so We've got like, we're at like 54 minutes, but like some other things, like I was just curious, like, I mean, I know you were in, you were in Fargo, but, uh, have you had a chance to go out and see the Deadpool and Wolverine movie yet? Are you into that no. kind of movie? Uh, I've seen the Deadpool movies, but I honestly, I didn't even realize it was a thing until you 
took a picture She's in the brought... movie theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw, like, an advertisement with the two of them together. I just oh, thought it was man. some sort of, like, co-branding for the cell phone that Ryan Reynolds does or whatever. Right. Like, I'm just, I'm out of it, dude. You I don't, are. I don't pay attention to any of that. So, no, I don't have any plans to see it. If my if my 16-year-old wants to go, I'll take him. But, like, yeah. he's he's kind of been out of superhero stuff for a while, too. Oh, wow. Why you got to put it like that? <laughs> <laughs> he's, like he's done being a dork, bro. <laughs> he grew up. It's pop culture. It's pop culture. He's uh, he's kind of over pop culture. Okay, but I understand that a lot of really cool, mature people are into it. So for that <laughs> reason, you. I approve. Well, like in I don't know, in my morning of not being able to make the trip with you guys out to Fargo, the the movie dropped last Thursday. It's been a week today. My wife gave me a hall pass to go see it oh, nice. last Thursday. I went solo by myself. So wow. if, you guys, if you haven't ever gone to a movie by yourself, it is one of the best, most liberating things ever. I love yeah. going to the movies by myself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she gave me a hall pass to go see that movie. I caught like a 4, nice. 3 p.m., 4 p.m. movie last Thursday. Great. It's yeah. great. For all of my fellow MCU nerds listening, <laughs> like, and if you haven't seen it yet, it was a great time. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. I just yeah. wasn't sure if it oh, was a different forgot. MCU. I forgot. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else should I talk about? Since the, So I don't know if this happened before or after our last podcast, but I just want to give another shout out to Darko because he's now got his products listed on Bro, well, a couple yeah. of them on Rogue's website. Congratulations. Um, congratulations oh, to Oh, you know what's boy, funny? David. You know what's funny, David, what? is um, like... There were multiple times where Darko lifting got brought up when we were at PRX oh, and they really? were asking me like about the deal with Rogue. Like I have insights. Like I told him that I was talking to, to David at home gym con about it. And he was telling me that like, I don't even know if it was like locked in yet. I think it was like, this might be happening. And they were like, how did he do it? What do they do? Are they manufacturing for him? Like what's going on? <laughs> like I have all the deals or like the details and, uh, I just, I, you might find that cool that like, yeah, they were super into it. And that was another one that I was like, I'm surprised that they know, like they knew about each and every one of his products in oh, detail. Sure. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. really cool. Like the fact that they, they were like in the weeds. I don't know if they recently just got in the weeds. I feel like TK's sort of always been in the weeds, but yeah, it was brought up a lot and I was the resident Darko expert. Oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 No, I'm excited for him. He's been, I knew that that was kind of in the works for some time now. And then they finally just made it happen and they just like appeared yeah. on the Rogue Fitness website. So that's big, man. Like yeah. that's really, really oh, cool. For sure. like, he's been grinding out of his garage for not too long, but he's been wildly successful. Yeah. And so to get your product on roguefitness.com is a nice arrow in his quiver for and sure. And apparently having your stuff on Rogue's website just with the increased visibility with the the with the customer base like it typically shoots sales through the roof. So like I hope yeah. that that happens like it it sounds <laughs> yeah, like that kind of spotlight on your products could definitely do that. That's awesome. That's really exciting, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for him. Anything else? You want to chat about? Got any new equipment? How's the... Uh, yeah. So two questions. Any new equipment that you've purchased or been gifted? And then part two or, yeah, 1B of that question is how is the move going so far? Have you started breaking down the gym yet? No. Um, okay. So no new equipment, obviously, because I'm moving. I got that... Uh, or I saw that rogue rhino on marketplace nearby oh, it's still yeah, you it's still on it, marketplace yeah, yeah oh it I, is yeah yeah i want to get it i'm so tempted to get it but like i don't know my i'm losing i'm like my gym space is shrinking by about half so like this is, is not big. a time to be adding this is a time to be subtracting so it's true i talked to jake 
He's gonna help me move some stuff. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to let him borrow my ATX Trinity Tower because I just don't have room for it. I no don't, way. man. Yeah. I mean, borrow. I said borrow. He knows he's, yeah. he's not gonna keep it forever. Um, I'm gonna see it on Marketplace posted oh, by Jake better. Jaworski. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He better not. But yeah, I think that might be the first piece that we break down. He's like, excited about it and it's it's big like the sooner i start breaking this stuff down the better but yeah. yeah like i don't know if i said it on the podcast but i have until the end of september in my current place so oh. it's not like i have to get everything moved out in a week or two weeks i have like six weeks so my plan is to start setting up the new space like get the flooring out, get the walls ready. And then once that's done, then start moving this stuff out piece by piece. But I have five or six power racks. I'm not going to be able to keep them all. Um, I'm going to have to look at Hoarder. getting rid of some of those. I am. I am. Well, I've been hoarding with the hope and expectation that I was going to get like a pole More bar. Space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so less. now I have all this stuff that I'm like, damn, I can't take it. But um, I mean, it's all good. I have more than than a little guy like me needs. So yeah. like it's it's More fine. Easy. I can part with some stuff. And necessity is the mother of all inventions. So like when you're squeezed into a, a smaller space, you find ways to use things differently and get more function so it'll probably be good for me it'll be fun maybe we'll start seeing some more uh diy youtube tutorials oh from yeah you. it's been a i'm while. working on i'm working on the uh the leg extension leg curl uh oh, like i mean but that's, the there's not going to be any lumber involved in that <laughs> There is. Yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. To like to to mount the cross members to mm -hmm. the. Yeah, I've got. Gotcha. I basically have the chair sitting on two by fours, and then have the two by fours connected to the cross members, and fr if it all works out like it's supposed to, like it does in my head, then uh, then that'll be enough to actually put some weight on the trolley. That'd but be cool. normally, what I do is like I'll do the build first, work out all the kinks, and then I'll go back and rebuild it for the camera. But yeah. that shit just takes way too long, so I'm just I'm doing it in real time, yeah. sort of like documenting this process, I run into issues. Like it's just a part of the the journey, man. Nice. Well, I look yeah. forward to seeing that one. Um... I don't have anything else. Yeah. I think we can call it a, call it a wrap. We'll see y'all see y'all in two weeks. Two weeks, bro. Oh, Home Gym Con 2025. Oh, man. Get your yes. tickets today. HGC. No, 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 no. D-Y-E-L-B. Oh, for the code, yeah. For the ticket code. <laughs> D-Y-E-L-B. Yes, go do that. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's it. All right. All see right. you, bro. See you, man.